Even if you're using grid template areas, as in this example, to lay out your items, you always have lines to use, so you can use a mixture of template areas and lines to position items if you want to. But something very interesting happens when you create the named areas, as we did in the last video. We get these magic named lines to use, and I've already covered how you create named lines when you define your grid, but we get these named lines for free, really, when we define our template areas. So let's have a look at that. Each named area creates four named lines. And essentially, they're the name of the area with dash start and dash end after it. So we have them for rows and we have them for columns around each area. So to see this in action, I'm going to add an additional item at the bottom of my layout. It's just going to be a div with a class of test. And you can see that that then appears uh, in the next available cell because Grid will just lay it out for us. So then if we go down here and we say test. Now I'm going to position this with line based positioning using named lines, although I've not declared any lines, but we can say grid row and let's say HD start. So that's the line above the header. And if I want it to finish, perhaps let's finish it um, main end. And it's created another column for the item because by default grid will place the item into an empty column or row track. But actually I want it to lie on top of the items. So let's start it at grid column and we'll take main start. So it's starting at hd-start at the top of the layout and it's finishing at main-end which is the end of the main item and it's starting at main start on the column tracks. And the reason it's lying on top rather than being underneath is because it was last in the source. Uh, if it had been first in the source it would have gone underneath and it might be useful to know that you can actually use uh, z-index to layer your items just like with absolute and relative positioned items so you can stack things up and you can alter how they appear in the stack. Now this actually also works the other way so here we're creating named lines from an area. However we can also do this in reverse. So this is a previous example where I created some named lines. So I'm naming my lines and I've named them content start and content end. So these are the lines that go around this article area. So again, if I add div with a class of test, And once again, it appears at the bottom of the layout in the next empty cell. Now, this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say test grid area content. And you can see it's now hopped up and it's gone over the article because that content area is the lines around the article. Uh, we've got content start and content end, both for columns and for rows. And we're positioning our article with content start on rows and columns. And so that area, that magic content area, is the area created by taking start and end off the line names. So as you can see, if you want this to work, you need to be careful about how you name your lines. So a little bit of thought when you're planning your layouts, how are you going to name lines and areas? means that you can then use this sort of ability to have these kind of magic lines and areas to also position items or perhaps to say to someone, oh, if you want that to appear there, you just need to pop it into this area and it'll work. Um, so that's something to think about as you're planning layouts, how you can use grid template areas and the way that you can create these magic lines and areas in order to create more useful layouts.